folks, Ozranger here. Time for another Bang Splat chat. Now a little while ago I said I'd do a video on 6mm projectiles and which ones I like and any inherent problems with them. And while I was doing my testing on my 6mm 06, which of course is an absolute hot rod, a few little things happened that I thought would be worth discussing as well. So in an attempt to make this video really short and certainly watchable, uh, I tried to record it probably two or three times, at least. Oh, my hand's not lying, it's probably more than two or three times, but it turns out a little bit of science went a long way in uh, working out the best configuration for some of these guns, and I think this is uh, a cross-platform problem, and def definitely worth mentioning if you are uh, considering buying a new rifle, or getting a new barrel made, or looking at doing any hot rodding or wildcatting and um, yeah I think you might find some of these results pretty interesting so for part one uh, we're just going to talk about the bullets quickly and then for part two we're going to do some science because when we hit 88 miles per hour we're going to see some serious now guys when you've got your 243 or you're looking at a new rifle and you want something that'll do a bit of everything it's really hard to go past a 55 grain projectile in a 243. They absolutely rock it along, they shoot dead flat, and they're capable of taking some pretty big game down. But I found the Varmageddon do explode and leave craters, and the crows are picking the soles of the giblets up out of the trees for at least a week. They do a really fantastic job of blowing things to bits. The Varmageddon, uh, sorry, the Varmint load is really nice, it's a nice little boat tail. It's very long for its uh, physical weight, uh, nice ballistic coefficient on it. These are really, really good. I use these quite quite a lot and I find they're pretty good for just about everything. But you know, if you're after that absolute earth-shattering, uh, world-ending, widow-making explosion, then you know, your Varmageddon's are always a good choice because they're cheap. In the bulk boxes, they are actually relatively cheap. The TNT, of course, are a favourite go-to because they're also cheap and they perform really, really well on pretty much anything that you shoot them with. Everything from small ferries up to decent-sized pigs, they will do the job. The other really nice one that's one of my favourites is, of course, the Hornady VMAX. You know, it's, it's a nice bullet and it's really well made and it's very, very destructive. But the problem is, is that they're quite expensive and even in the smaller 58 and... 65 grain weights, they're just too expensive until Hornady, who I've been on touch in touch with a few times, you know, they're they're leaving me alone at night. All by myself. Just waiting for the replacement for the Z Max. It's 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 kinda lonely. So I digress. So realistically the answer to the question of which six millimeter pill is the best, well in any of these lighter selections from the 55s through the 70s, my other favourite is the 87 grain um, VMAX, that's also really really good. Anything in the 87 grain tends to function really well out of the 243 or any of the other 6mm calibers. Don't exactly know why that is, it just is. But these, you, you really can't go wrong with a modern projectile. Now I want to move on from here and discuss something that I think is missed in a lot of design intent because I missed it. Um, I didn't realize the potential downfalls of uh, certain twist rates and certain rifles because there seems to be of some pretty big number changes when you're talking about reasonable velocities in different pills and uh, even different rifles. So I'll tell you what happened first. I built a 1 in 14 twist, 6mm 06 that shoots the 65 grain VMAX at 4300 feet per second. But I actually built it around shooting a 70 grain Varmageddon at 4,000 feet per second. Now what was happening was that the Varmageddon wasn't expanding quickly and blowing things to absolute smithereens. Even though on the box it says ultra thin jacket, devastating terminal performance and violent expansion, expansion, expansion. According to them marketing, it wasn't getting violent expansion. In fact, it would drill a hole through and it would only expand in maybe a four inch cavity about an inch and blow that inch hole up out through it so it wasn't actually expanding quickly enough to give that Achoo! pardon me the result that I really wanted which was just to blow things to bits it's still knocked them dead like don't get me wrong but not what I was looking for 
This Hornady 65 grade VMAX on the other hand would detonate inside the animal. You'd usually see its entire chest cavity puff up with the force of the uh, internal explosion and the uh, hydrostatic shock and it would fall over or it would find a way out. Path of least resistance. Somewhere, you know, it's quite spectacular. Um, but I wanted to understand what the hell was going on here. You know, at that speed, this pill should be blowing things to bits. So I did a bit of maths, did a bit of science, and something came to, something reared its ugly head, which I, I was really interested to find out more about. And that is the centri uh, centripetal force exerted on the jacket of the bullet during flight, and why that's important for your terminal effects. Now we all know bullets can blow up if they're spun too fast in flight. And we all know that we do get splash wind sometimes with some of these pills traveling at really high insane velocities and even my 40 grain Z-Max out of a 1 in 8 twist in a ticket 223 has actually done splash wounds. No kidding. It's very interesting. But I found a way that we can work out using a benchmark what our expected results from these pills would be and I've now got a number. If you'd like to hear about it, stay tuned. Here it comes. With science. Okay, folks. So, as you can see here, I have my 70 grain pill loaded at 4,000 feet per second, and a 1 in 14 twist is producing 205,700 RPM, and that equates to on the extent of the jacket in flight. 1,419 pounds of force trying to pull that jacket apart. Now it's become evident in empirical testing that that is not quite high enough to absolutely cause things to get blown to bits. But in, what it does though is turn the Varmageddon Z-Max and the Varmint into a really effective deer load. It'll drill right through that plate of bone and using its kinetic energy penetrate deep into those vital organs which is what we want. So again this is now a design uh, of the rifle more than the bullet to get the desired effects we want. But here's the important part is if you've never really considered it and then this is something that might be really interesting to you because it's giving me a benchmark now that I can work out some figures and work out what's going to happen to my bullet before I buy the rifle. Now a lot of rifles like Ticker might make the same caliber in 1 in 8, 1 in 10 and 1 in 12 twist. It makes a really big difference. So let's put my 65 grade pill in there. So bear with me, I know you can't wait to see this, 65, now a 65 grain pill in my rifle is spinning at 4300 feet per second times 720, come on 7, divided by 14 to 221,000, let's put that in there. And the 65 grain is actually producing a little bit more force on its jacket, which is just probably just getting it over the line at 1500. Still not spectacular, but it is doing the job, and that could also be partly based for on the uh, design of the projectile itself. But let's do something here. Now, a 1 in 12 twist versus a 1 in 14 is not going to drop the velocity all that much. So let's do 4300 times 720 divided by. 12 twist. Now that changes the RPM now to 258,000. Let's watch what happens. Oh my gosh. We're now 500 plus more foot pounds of energy on that jacket. Now, on that tiny jacket, that says to me that's a huge amount more force. And probably starting to get us somewhere where we want to blow that you know that thing can blow itself to bits and give it that devastating terminal performance we want with a loss of very little velocity because at 1 in 12 and 14 I know for a fact you're not going to really lose much at all in terms of your ultimate velocity so let's go to a 55 grain pill let's put it in a 243 with a 1 in 9 twist so that'll go at 4,000 feet per second divided by, oh sorry, multiplied by 720 divided by 9. And look at this. Now we're talking about 320,000 
RPM. Now I know the Varmageddon's can handle this, but that's, that is an astoundingly bigger number or astoundingly great deal, greater deal of force on the outside of that projectile trying to rip it to bits than even my 65 grain pill traveling at 4300 feet per second. So the 70 grain pill you know, 1 in 14 has actually got the least amount of force exerted on that jacket of all the pills we've tried so far. That makes it a really nice deep penetrating bullet, but isn't it funny that that one, well two inches of twist from 14 to 12 breaks this out into this much greater number. Okay guys, so it looks like that the Valmageddon's can handle this, but some bullets may or may not, but what we can do is go to empirical testing and say well actually a 556 five, so let's put this in here half of 556 five, so 5.56 five, divided by 2 is 2.78 there goes my iPad so let's go 552.78 and we're going to use a 40 grain pill and then we're going to put it in a 1 and 8 twist at 3800 feet per second so 3,800 feet per second times 720 divided by 8 is 342,000. Well, that's interesting. So that's only 2,000 pounds of force. Can that be right? Yep, 342,000. Now I get splash wounds with that. So I think that this is almost cutting edge of velocity for those small VMAX. Interesting, so do you see what I'm doing here guys? You know, I'm starting to get an idea of what these different projectiles can handle. You know, if I was to increase that velocity up into the 42s, that's gonna obviously spin a lot quicker. That's in a one and eight. But it tells us, what does this tell us? tell you what it tells us this is where my mind's at and hopefully you're getting the idea anything over 2,000 pounds of force on the exterior jacket is gonna make a real nice god damn tarnation tootin mess of those groundhogs and yotes and guilds sorry about the accent but yeah you get it right so this is empirically what my testing is showing me. Anything over 2,000 pounds of force should blow things to bits. Anything less, you're looking at a bit deeper penetration. So now you can take this away with you and go, I need a gun that I might need to be able to use on two different things. I know that a one in 12 at this speed or a one in 10 will do this for me with these pills and these are the two different pills I intend to use. And then you can look at your numbers and go, that's going to give me spectacular blowy uppy or a bit deeper penetration or potentially both just by changing what projectile that you're using and shooting it at a certain speed. So to change this value, all you need to do is change your twist rate, your bullet radius, your mass, and these figures will change. But it's interesting. So next time you go to buy a rifle, instead of just buying a new rifle and selling your old crudged out one to some poor sod, you know, second hand, just get a new barrel. Keep your old barrel, get it chambered in an AI or something, but you, but put a new bullet on it, uh, barrel on it, it'll be cheaper, I promise you. 600 to 700 bucks for a brand new rifle with a barrel length, anything you want, with any twist weight you want, it's gonna be made better than anything you buy off the shelf. Just some food for thought. Now that I've gone and made an entire mess in my garage, knocking all the nozzle boxes over and stuff. Just to recap, all of these bullets will do a fantastic job on almost anything, depending on your twist rate. Pretty cool, huh? Something interesting. Anyway, which six mil millimeter bullet do I like the best? Well, honestly, I like whatever's cheap because they all seem to shoot well in this day and age. Anyway, guys, if you like this video and this is of any interest to you, getting those force values and working out what blows up and what doesn't and what penetrates well and what doesn't. Like and subscribe, it's really important to me. Hopefully it's really important to you that I keep making videos like this. I just thought that was really interesting and worth having a chat about since I, you know, I experienced it. 
So my takeaway message from this video, one in 12 should be the slowest twist rate you go if you want to get into that serious blowy varminty uppy thing. I think one in 12 is probably the maximum twist rate. One in 14 is too slow. I mean, yes, it's super accurate, but when you actually want to use it in a practical sense and these bad boys here and just blow them to smithereens, one in 12, one in 11, one in 10 is gonna give you much better results. Anyway guys, have fun. I'm glad you stuck around. Hopefully that you learned, learned something. Good to have you. Hunt safe, look after your mates. Take care of each other. Leave the place if in the same condition or better than when you found it. Don't hunt drunk and be a knob. Ruin it for the future generations of hunters to come. See you next time.